Hi. Um, so my crush, uh, my first real crush happened um, the summer I was 16 before my junior year of high school. Um, and even in retrospect, I think my first crush was a fairly crushable crush. He had a lot of good crush attributes. He was funny, he was smart, he was a good athlete. He was a twin. I don't know why that's more attractive, but that was very attractive. <laughs> he was a, a twin. And uh, the summer before my junior year at a pool party, he kissed me. And then, unbeknownst to me, he had been told very recently by his Naval Academy recruiter, he was a year older than I was, um, that the worst thing that he could possibly do was to get involved in a relationship. So it just so happened that right after the pool party, we both had family vacations. I didn't see him again for three weeks, and when I did see him, I was a little expectant, and he said, you know what, a, a relationship, he's not unkindly, a relationship's not a, not a good thing for me right now. I was disappointed, but he went to a different school. I didn't see him that often. And when I did see him, there was a friendliness that verged on flirtation that kept me expectant and kept me hopeful. And when homecoming came around, and nobody asked me um, to go to homecoming. I, I uh, plucked up my courage, and I asked him if he would go. Now, it was a dance. It wasn't a relationship. And I thought, and very kindly, he agreed that he would be my date to go to homecoming. We had a lovely evening, um, and I added very fun to dance with to the list of attributes that he had as my first crush. And when we pulled in my driveway, thanks to the fact that nobody wore seatbelts in 1982, and I had chosen a sateen dress on his mother's vinyl station wagon seats, I went right on the floor, which led to a proximity for me to get my second kiss from my crush. And he very kindly said, I'm not going to call you. Oh, but, but I was still so happy. It had been such a wonderful night. And I just danced up to my front door. And I was so distracted in my little I'm so happy dance that he really almost seemed like he had vanished from my driveway by the time I got to my door. And never to underestimate the romantic imagination of a 16-year-old girl. I created this little fantasy based on one of my favorite books, which was The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, that Michael was my own personal Narnia, and I had just stepped out of the wardrobe by accident, and someday I would step back into it again. And it was really a very lovely little thing that I had going in my mind. And when I saw him at a New Year's Eve party, and he kissed me for the third time, <laughs> and he said, well, I guess this is inevitable. I'm going to have to call you, not unkindly, and he did. <laughs> and I got to see him about every week for the next couple months, and I had such a crush on him, and it was just so fun, you know, it was a crush. So we did fun things, like I made my mom buy a rose, and we drove over to his, she drove me over to his house, and I gave it to him while his brother rolled his eyes, and I, and he very, not, very, uh, not, not unkindly said thank you. <laughs> And I went home, and I was still so happy. And then when a couple months went by, I was still crushed and I was happy. And, and the best thing about a crush, of course, is that there's no responsibility. There's no pain associated with it. It's just fun, right? You're just acting and playing. And, and when he was scheduled to go to a track meet in California, I picked him a bouquet of daffodils, and I brought him to his house. And I said, I need you to carry these on the plane. So that, you'll, so that you'll have luck, and his brother really rolled his eyes, and he not unkindly said, thank you. Um, well, I guess I should get you something, too. And I was like, ooh, he's getting it. He's getting it. He's got it figured out now. And I'm like, and so images of California are rolling through my mind, and I'm like, I would like you to get me a palm tree leaf. He said, what? I said, I want you to climb up a palm tree and bring me a palm tree leaf from California. <laughs> And he was like, yeah. <laughs> a week later, he showed up at my door with a palm tree leaf. <laughs> and honest to God, the first thing I thought was, oh, shit. He's not, he's not, he's not playing. Like, he's not playing. And I'd never been in a real relationship before. And I, but something about the collective human soul that we all share made me realize that this meant there was responsibility. And, he was leaving for the Naval Academy in six weeks, and that meant there was going to be pain. And I was like, oh, shit, this is not good. But we made the best of the next six weeks. He left. There was lots of pain. 
Also, 16-year-old girl pain, which is very bad. Um, and we stayed together for a year, um, mostly separated, and not unkindly parted about a year later. But it, it was, it was. I remember that fondly, and it let me go into the second love of my life relationship a little bit wiser. And so it was uh, when I met David. Um, he, I w I, if I hadn't been so wise, I might have not recognized his fascination with the floor when I walked into the room or his inability to speak. I might have thought those were Epson seizures, but I realized he had a crush, he had a crush on me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's, that's adorable. No wonder he let me hang around. That's really adorable. So we started dating, and after about a month of dating, of continuous college dating exposure, he developed the ability to speak in my presence again, and I thought that was nice. But after a couple more months of dating, when we were seniors in, in college and facing some pretty big life decisions, I, I noticed something still hadn't extinguished overexposure, and that was he would very rarely take my hand in public. Like, he was a little nervous about that still. But when I took his hand in public, he would squeeze it so tight, it was, it was almost a little uncomfortable. Right? And I was like, oh my goodness, I think he's still got a crush on me. And we were about to make some big decisions, and I decided it was time to give him the palm tree leaf. <laughs> because <laughs> he needed to know that like, I wasn't playing about this. And so I, of course, couldn't give him a palm tree leaf because he wouldn't understand that. So I went to the card shop, and I thought, oh, I'll find him a card. And I wanted to express an emotion that was not, it wasn't I love you. It was more complicated than that. It was the, the strong possibility that in the near future I was going to say that. Um, and so I went to the card shop, and uh, the cards are sappy. There was nothing there. I found a book of poetry. Yeah, it was, that was not good, but it did inspire me to uh, write out my best calligraphy and frame the one and only work of poetry of my lifetime. Uh, you want to hear it? <laughs> I searched for something to let you know how I felt about you, a poem or a saying, but then I realized that no one could really know how I felt about you except for you, and I hold you dear. So 30 years later, men are a little slow. I think my husband just went, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs>